So I would like now to introduce the, the second speaker um, of, uh, of this morning, um, who is uh, Martin van den Broek. Am I mispronouncing it right, if I can say? Uh, <laughs> so Martin is uh, head of the um, uh, collection department and member of the uh, management team of the uh, Netherlands Photo Museum, which is an institution um, which was founded in 2003 uh, in Rotterdam, uh, which is the national uh, museum uh, for photography in the Netherlands, and which houses uh, especially uh, the archives of part of the archives of more than 150 uh, Dutch photographers. Uh, before that, uh, Martin was uh, working uh, at the uh, national, am I right, national, Netherlands Foundation for Visual Art Design and Architecture and uh, also uh, at the Netherlands Photo Archives. Uh, Martin seems to be a, a man of uh, multiple Sorry. talents yeah. because uh, he is uh, well, in his institution responsible for oh, acquisitions, just, okay. restoration, the library, uh, use and sales of photography and he's going to talk about maybe not all these aspects, but at least some of the, these aspects. The, the micro is yours, Martin. Thank you. Um, thank you, Carolina. Thank you, uh, National Museum, to receive us. I think it's uh, very interesting until now. Uh, weekend was interesting, so let's hope we continue this way. Um, uh, uh, uh. Here we are. Okay. Um, so, I'll talk about uh, the Netherlands Photo Museum, uh, its exhibitions and uh, the collections. Um, I'll take some more time to talk about uh, the permanent uh, collection exhibitions, which is a bit, um, well, it's interesting maybe for here, and about the uh, use of the collections by uh, artists. So, the museum is uh, quite n a new museum. It's uh, f funded in 2003. And it was uh, funded out of three separate institutions. A photo institute without a collection, but with a big library. A photo archive with um, photographers' archives in there. I'll talk more about it later. And a photo restoration atelier, which was commercial. And together we formed a new museum and moved to a new uh, building in 2007. The number of staff is 22. So this is our building. Uh, we only have a small part of it, so it looks far more exciting than it is. I'm sorry. Um, our financial basis is 3 million euros, and it's, it comes from uh, different sources. Um, we have the Minister of uh, Culture. The city of Rotterdam is an important sponsor. It, it almost pays for one third of the museum. And we have um, a, f a private fund called Wertheimer Fund, and of course uh, sponsors and other generated income. So this is the bookshop, and uh, the bookshop itself is not 5,000 square meters. Um, that's the whole museum. Um, here it is divided by um, uh, in uh, separate. Uh, um, places, well, the, the exhibition space is 1,500 square meters and uh, the cold storage vault, um, which interests me as a collection head, is 800 square meters, which is quite good. Uh, we have a gallery where we sell prints. Um, this is the organi organization, um, of course, with a board and a director and three separate uh, departments. Photographed by Art Klein, 1966. So um, the collection, the exhibitions, and um, uh, the presentation and the ex education are all f um, organized around the same uh, principles. We see uh, photography as a social and as an artistic medium. Um, every, all the activities are guided by the strong documentary tradition in the Netherlands and also by its renewal. Um, and uh, we present history of photography from a contemporary point of departure. We show uh, new presentation techniques and platforms. 
Um, of course, we manage major part of the photo photographic heritage, important archives and projects, and we try to be an uh, active partner in the field of visual education and of cultural production. Of course, we make exhibitions. And here we show photography in the broadest sense, from a vernacular to the family album. Um, we show documentary and photojournalism, scientific, commercial, and other applied photography. And we show art. Um, this program links to and overlaps with um, the visual arts, with film, with architecture, a lot with graphic design, with sociology, anthropology, art history, media. So it's an uh, interdisciplinary program. We have three large exhibitions per year and six smaller ones. And we have a semi-permanent exhibition which is called uh, The Dark Room, and it's about the history of photography from a thematical perspective. We show um, usually one exhibition a year abroad. Um, for this, we do in-house productions, traveling shows, and we have young guest curators. So we present in our exhibitions uh, historical and contemporary photography, um, national and international photography. We do monographic exhibitions and we do thematic exhibitions about everything. So, um, a photograph by Ed van der Elskum from 59 in South Africa. So the collection, um, it is a mix between an archive and a museum collection. We preserve complete um, negative archives by Dutch photographers. Um, it is about 4 million negatives now, we don't know exactly. Um, we have about 400,000 prints, and they are mostly from the early 1900s till today. Uh, most of the archives are kept, but often we do not own the, uh, the archives. We have long-term contracts with family or other owners, uh, where we include exploitation uh, rights and copyrights. And if we use an archive, uh, especially if we use it for third parties, uh, a percentage of the generated re revenues from copyrights is being paid to the photographers or families. So that's usually 50%, and that's also one of the reasons why we never pay for acquiring an archive. Um, for the acquisition of an archive, um, we have a committee who advise us if or if not we should take this archive. A famous photograph from World War II by Cas Oorthuis. Uh, it's one of the Dutch photo photographs in the family of man. So currently we have about 150 archives of Dutch photographers, um, amongst others uh, Ed van der Elsken and Cas Oorthuis, Piet Zwart, Paul Schuitema. A self-portrait by Katrina Berend in 1908. This is a vintage print from one of her smaller albums, albums. And a scan of the glass plate negative for the not so purist. Um, the collection, um, some examples of the collection themes which we have um, in our collection, they are a there are also cultural and photohistorical issues like daily life in the Netherlands and abroad. Um, the Netherlands and the water, former colonies, um, World War II, social upheavals, and there's of course also art. Um, a photograph by a Dutch photographer, Ches Gerritsen, of which we have the whole archive. It's a famous portrait of Pinochet in 1973. So, um, the collection is stored in um, perfect conditions. Uh, we have about 10 different storage rooms. Um, negatives uh, and slides, color and black and white, are all stored at 3 degrees and 33% humidity. 
And then we have three, or in total we have three zones, so we have a 13 degree zones, uh, zone and an 18 degree zone. Decode storage. So we use the collection um, for research, for education, for exhibitions. Um, in the exhibitions we use, if possible, we use vintage, but we also use um, analog and um, digital uh, new prints, which we made in our museum, which we make in our museum. Um, we have the possibility to order from our website for uses in, uh, in books, in catalogs, in, in magazines, where we charge copyright and we um, give that partly to, back to the families. And we sell um, new prints, either fiber-based, but we also um, sell um, uh, inkjet prints on aluminium with a popular department store. It's only a small selection, but we're quite happy with that. Um, project. So we digitize. Um, we try to make um, the collection accessible for larger audience. Um, this is done for image sales, um, but also for uh, for the database, which has uh, around about 600,000 records. Uh, they're all online, and 155,000 images are also online. And we work in projects uh, either scanning on demand for customers or, uh, or, or we have project funding from, uh, from the Netherlands government. Sometimes it's now drying up. So the collection is visible uh, inside and outside of the museum, um, either in exhibitions, which can be monographic or thematic. Um, we have an on the spot interactive access to the 155 digitized photographs. So the same material which is online, we also show within the museum and it's directly linked to the database. So the moment we upload new images, we sh also show them, we can show them in the museum. We have some interactive installations and we have a film lounge where we show movies by um, Dutch photographers. And of course we have a gallery. Um, this is a f circus by uh, Lucebert in 56. As an example, I would like to show our, um, our, our, our uh, De Donkere Kamer, The Dark Room. It is a semi-permanent collection exhibition. I think it will stay at least for three years and might be a bit longer. And here we um, show the history of photography in the Netherlands with um, the collection as main focus. Uh, it was done for educational reasons and it should be approachable for various target groups but um, one of the target groups is uh, a 15 year old um, uh, someone from, the, from, the, from school so it is um, quite a, um, it was quite important for the, uh, the tone of voice uh, which we chose in this uh, in this uh, exhibition because of course um, it is quite permanent. We do show vintage material, but this is um, interchanged every three months. So that's quite a lot of work. So we also show a lot of digital um, material. I might show a short um, clip later on. So this is the dark room. It is uh, 22 stories on various episodes of Dutch photography. The design was done by uh, famous Dutch exhibition architects and they won a few design awards with the exhibition. It has quite small but also epic stories. Um, and the, f the good thing about the exhibition is that it's flexible. You can add or remove stories. And the goal was to have a broad audience and uh, a sub substantial uh, increase of visitors. There's a timeline, of course, with some small camera um, illustrations. And maybe later on I might show 
one or two of the clips. So traditionally, we acquired a collection of author-based Dutch archives, archives of both professionals and amateurs. But we now have new directions in active collections. Um, we try to acquire a project-based complete series, usually centered around books. Um, and we try to also acquire the context of these books, like dummies or um, um, uh, contact prints, everything around a certain book. Um, we also experiment with digital collect collecting. This was one of the, um, uh, we, we had to, because uh, some of the books were made digitally, so uh, there were, di we've, we started to um, acquire digital-born uh, images. Um, unfortunately, uh, this year our acquisition budget was temporarily frozen uh, due to uh, government budget cuts, so we are in the same uh, area trying to, um, to figure out new ways of getting these projects to our museum. Um, there are some special projects within the collection. Um, photography books have always been um, a form in which um, um, of the photographers from our archives um, uh, thought it was important to show their work, so they have always, dummies and books have always been uh, one of the key issues in our collection, and we, um, we, um, we still keep uh, focusing on books. Um, we do some films and videos by photographers, we collect them also, and we have the, uh, the past in the present program, in which we have artists from now working with material from the archives. I would like to show very shortly a few projects which more or less fit in that program. We started in uh, around about, I think, 2002 with a project by um, Chris Dorley Brown, uh, who did uh, an exhibition and also did this piece in Rotterdam. So this is a 1966 photograph from our collection made by Bob van Damme. And this is Chris Dorling Brown. So it was pretty straightforward re photography. Um, some more recent projects, uh, one of which is uh, the, pro the sequel, and it was initiated by uh, the Noordlicht Festival. It's done by Andrea Stultjens, and she's still working on it. And she works with the archive of Dr. Paul Julien. Uh, an amateur anthropologist and a photographer from our collections. So part of the, this project is uh, re-photography, uh, but it is less strict than the first project I showed. Part of it is using um, this old Dutch photography to try to recover the history of Africa and discuss it with local people in uh, Nigeria, Uganda and Liberia. A photograph by Julien and one by Andrea Stultjens. Group portrait, the photographer and his people. In our archive, we have um, family albums made by one of our photographers called Nico Jesse, and he did this in the province of Limburg during the Second World War, uh, in 42 and 43. And uh, 70 years later, with the uh, um, help of a newspaper and a Facebook page, we uh, traced 10 of these families, and uh, new photographs of the families were made by uh, Raphael Philippen and Edith Eusen. Yes, sir. And one of the two newer photographers. So in 2013, um, this year, we showed um, The Sound of Silence by um, Alfredo Jaar. You probably know this work. Um, it has 
uh, it is centered around one photograph by Kevin Carter in Sudan from 93. This is the photograph. And um, Alfredo Jaar uh, was very impressed by a photograph which was made by Kun Wessing of Will We um, Keep the Archive. Um, when he heard we had this archive and when we showed him the material, he decided he would try to make um, a new work with this pro pro photograph. It's quite sure he will be doing this, but it is not sure when it will be finished. So a scan of the negative, which is not worked at, you see the difference. We have uh, contact prints and we have um, more material around the series. Um, I think Alfredo Jaar thought it was one, well, lucky shot is a bit weird, but it was one photograph. But it is a series of, um, of photographs and um, Kun Wessing went to the family um, of these people to, um, to go, go there. So there is a, a, a big series. Mm. This is how the photographs was used in the Netherlands. And the last uh, example is an installation by Veronique Bourgoin. Um, she used photographs from our collection in a, a trompe l'oeil um, installation about, about the truth, truth of images. Here, for example, the backgrounds are from our collection and they have been photoshopped into rooms which don't exist. So some, um, to end my presentation, some nice uh, uh, issues and dilemmas from our practice. Um, so of course the ethics as an archive, what should or should not be kept forever. We sometimes acquire archives which consist of 700,000 images at once. Should we all keep this? Um, how to deal with negatives that were never printed by the photographer? Um, we like to use them, but can you? Um, so new technologies create new possibilities for presenting um, these um, negatives if, the, if you don't have a vintage print. How to collect and to describe, to conserve, and how to show digital born work in the future? Well, one of the ideas is that we start talking earlier with photographers. We used to get archives when photographers uh, finished working. Now we try to talk to them when they are 40 or 50 and try to discuss with them what they think is important. So we need expertise and funds for the keeping of digital collections, um, which almost doubles the collections uh, budget because of course the analog material we don't throw it away. Um, how to collect, uh, especially um, uh, recent uh, amateur photography. What do you do with Facebook, Flickr and Instagram when it's, when it's gone in 10 years? Um, or maybe not. Maybe the NSA can help us out there. Um, we want a proactive attitude in the acquisition. Um, because I think if we wait, as we have waited within the time of the analog archives, we'll probably uh, lose a lot of context with, these, uh, with this material. And then one of the issues is, um, is it good or not good to describe archives with crowdsourcing? Sourcing? It, um, it takes a lot of structural investment to start it up, and will that be worth it? It would be interesting enough. Thank you, Martin, for this uh, very interesting presentation. And I know that you had two films to show, but I'm afraid we don't have time. Uh, I have a question about questions because I have observed that. Uh, questions are emerging more and more and so my question is whether you have any format to address some of those questions. Well, 
I think uh, good uh, these uh, meeting people and discussing it with them is is one of the good answers. I think um, talking with photographers is practical, but not always only listening to photographers. Um, especially not always listen to families of photographers, but uh, it is one of the um, the points we we need to address. No, same same answer. I think uh, the, the meetings and uh, symposium are a good way to 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 exchange. Uh, but I have to say that I was very impressed by uh, your answer before, saying that you will, on specific project, be able to uh, receive some of the public to bring their material and the museum to give the the expertise. And uh, perhaps you can hear more about this experience. More questions? Other questions? So, when you think, I, I, will, I would have uh, one question for you about um, uh, um, an aspect that I think you didn't address, which is, I would call, national identities. Uh, let me explain my, myself. Uh, Sam, for example, you're heading the... Uh, the museum which has the biggest collection in Switzerland, and yet you're not the Swiss Museum of Photography, because there's in fact another institution uh, in, in Winterthur, uh, which houses the archives of Swiss photographers. Uh, do you feel yet, because of the fact that you're in Lausanne, you are in a way more deeply committed to uh, the Swiss uh, photographic scene? And to rephrase that question to Martin, what is it to work in a national museum in a context that is in a way more and more global? Yes, that's a very interesting question, and uh, especially for a French coming to Switzerland, perhaps for a French going to America, how, how you deal with the local uh, scene. I have to say that we don't have any um, uh, uh, politician pressure on, on us. Uh, it's not on my agenda to uh, have a specific part of my schedule or acquisition that need to be devoted to Swiss photography. And you know that Switzerland is a, a, a confederation, so a group of 26 states. And uh, if we start to go into this subject, we should be really local and uh, to collect the vaudoise uh, photography. Um, but I, I really feel committed to, uh, to the local scene. And um, the, the real issue is to, to find some photographers that have the international standards and to be sure to, to promote them, to promote them inside in the museum, but to be sure they are seen on the international scene as, uh, as well. And I have to say that I'm much more excited when I'm able to uh, get a Swiss photographer uh, into a, a European or American collection or exhibited in an international uh, festival than doing just the job in my, in my country. But we do it and we do it on, a, on an international and local base. Um, we are a national museum, um, but in our exhibitions we are totally not so national, so we are an international uh, exhibitions program. Um, but in your acquisition... In, in, in our archives, we have... A photographer should be Dutch. So that's quite simple. Um, it was one of the, the, the ideas from the archive. It wasn't a national... Uh, uh, national um, it was a thought up by photographers, and they decided to, to start this archive. Um, but also in the archives, uh, although the photographers are from Holland, we have at least a few photographers who have never photographed in Holland. They've always traveled around. So um, we have photographs from Congo and from everywhere. Um, so although some of the themes we address, especially when there's government funding, um, it, it, we have done projects around World War II in Holland, of, um, around the, the, the Great Flood in 53. So we have projects around Dutch identity, but we also have projects around other subjects. It's also, um, there the, the, the copyright and the sales is sometimes a nice way 
to um, um, diverge between your collection because sometimes an, a subject from an international subject might sell better. So we'll, we've always switched around, switched between um, national and international subjects. Thank you. Some questions from the audience. Oh, Matthew. I th I'm very intrigued uh, by both of your, you, you both proposed uh, how to handle uh, large quantities of photographs uh, in a less than permanent way. And this is a very interesting proposition, but it's also being carried out by both of you. Uh, maybe to cast the question another way, and uh, just so that we can discuss it, I think you're, you're also talking about what it means um, to, in, in a way, withdraw, withdraw yourselves as intermediaries. I mean, that is to say that your museum would be a pass-through Yes, in a way, from someone else having determined a collection and then to a public that would receive it. Um, of course, not of course, but people may not know, but most of the great museums, by great I only mean large or, or well visited, uh, are collections of collections. Uh, there's usually another intermediary, uh, the artist or the artist's family, a dealer, a collector, who sells or gives, right? Uh, what has been brought together. But then you bring up an interesting, one interesting point is what if you don't, what if you are not the final resting place, but only a pass through? And then a second question that you brought up, Martin, was what if uh, there is no intermediary? Because with Instagram or Facebook, not only are there no collectors, but there really aren't likely to be collectors. I mean, it's, it's just very unlikely someone is going to aggregate. Uh, and you might not even, no one might even want what that person brought together. So I guess it's just a question for discussion. There's no particular point here, but in, in one sense, you withdraw yourself as anything but a pass-through. And in another sense, you're asking, what about a world of images where really some interme intermediary would be needed if one wants to preserve it in any way? Uh, and I just put it out as a question really for all of us to what degree do we want not to be present and to what degree do we want to be very present? Do, would you, for instance, want to sit down and go through Instagram yourself or with a team in order to assemble such a collection? Is this a project of interest? Uh, yeah. That's. So I can perhaps answer to the first part of the question <laughs> and Flickr, I leave it to you <laughs> because I don't touch Flickr. Um, Yes, this is true that most of the important early collection were based on um, uh, collector's collection. And, uh, but nowadays, except uh, you, historian or curators, uh, who knows it? Who knows the story of the four collections that started the, the Getty? Who knows uh, who is able to see Manfred Eiting at uh, Houston? Who is able to see Roger Terron at Musée de d'Orsay, they are um, into this collection um, um, collected individually and exhibited individually. If you can read cl uh, clearly the, the caption, perhaps you will have this information, but there is no history of, this, uh, of these collectors. Uh, and this history, I think, should be, should be done one, one day. Um, regarding this idea of being in between, um, it's not exactly what we ex expect. Uh, we receive this collection on consignment, uh, but we, we hope to renew it on a long-term base, 10 years, 25 years, and we really hope that at the end of the term, uh, we will have convinced the owner to renew the consignment. But it's really uh, a pragmatic uh, approach. The question is, do you invest in the collection or do you invest in the structure and in the people? Uh, if you have the choice, of course you will do both, 
uh, on my side, I don't have the choice, and uh, perhaps it's another way to answer also what is our um, uh, implication on the on the local uh, term. Uh, yes, I prefer, and it's much easier for me to convince my authorities to uh, fund for a new position and to invest in jobs uh, because it's a, a direct return to our community than to give uh, one million to an estate in exchange of some piece of papers. And uh, that's what you are speaking about. When you, you want to fund for a position for the Bury estate, a position in Switzerland costs more or less uh, 100,000 Swiss francs a year, and uh, you get it for 20 years, so you are speaking of 2 million. Do you prefer to give 2 million to the, to the estate and the photographer? Perhaps it's better for the, for the photographer, or do you invest it into the, the, the research and the, and the local uh, economy? And I think today we are speaking more and more of, uh, of a economy of culture, cultural economy. But uh, Sam, for example, aren't you afraid of... Um, let's take the Bury or, or some archive that you don't possess. Aren't you afraid of... Uh, Having, for example, in 20 years, once you have done what I would call the dirty work of cataloging, of studying, of, of restoring the estate, to have to be, being, to be obliged to return to, to the family once that, that collection has this added value and uh, we could see it put on the market afterwards. Of course, and, and this is the main, uh, the main issue, the main uh, discussion to, to have. Um, I, I have a few answers for, for that. First, we work on a very clear uh, contract that is done by, by laws, lawyers and that says that at the end of the term, all the investment done by the museum should be reimbursed if the, the, the estate is living. For the very precise case of the René Bury, the foundation has been uh, created and the, the foundation is Swiss-based, so um, their, their, their patrimony, the patrimony of the foundation cannot be uh, uh, sold. So it means that if we are not the one to keep the collection in 25 years from now, it won't arrive on the market. It will go to Getty, to Chicago, to MoMA, if they do a, a, a better job. But in the other hand, we can really challenge ourselves uh, if we are not the best to do the job, and if another museum can do the job better. Let's do it. I know the Dorothea Lang estate, 33,000 pieces, which is at the Auckland Museum. A museum very nice, but we, which, which is a, a public city museum with no money. The estate is just sleeping there since uh, decades with nobody working on it, no project being done from, uh, from it because there is no, no budget. I don't think it's, uh, it's crazy to think that this estate can be removed from this, uh, from this museum. So I know that this kind of discussion are not very politically correct, that nowadays a curator say it's better I own, I pay a lot of money but I keep it for my myself but who cares to keep it for for itself to be the owner of the of the piece of paper there was a question uh, I come from Italy where uh, the issue of the museums with uh, uh, all the stuff uh, in uh, the canteen uh, uh, not shown uh, to visitors uh, is a major priority at the moment is under discussion. So I feel uh, fully in the discussion that uh, is this morning uh, on the table. Uh, what do you think about uh, the new technologies that are changing the role of the museums? And uh, what do you think about uh, photography being uh, a leader in renewing the role of the museums because even more in the photography the digital representation of the image has a value per itself because the value of the paper 
the printing is uh, more limited than the value of uh, the painting of Leonardo. I mean that uh, photography is a more modern uh, way of uh, cultural heritage and maybe the way to build the museums of uh, photography can uh, be uh, an inspiration for the old European museums to transform their role in the society. I agree. <laughs> no, I think um, uh, in photography, um, the risk is uh, even people within the museum only see it as an image. So I showed here a lot of images which might have been scanned from negatives and worked at by another photographer than the photographer himself. So, but, but you see it as, a, as an Ed van der Elske, but it, this might not be an Ed van der Elske. It might be a negative by Ed van der Elske done with Photoshop to look like Ed van der Elske. So we, even within the museum, we have this risk of a photograph being only an image. From the other ways, it is also, also an image. So if you want to be uh, part of digital world, you have to choose to digitize and sometimes to digitize. If you want to show um, negatives, you have to sometimes digitize material which is only a s starting product for the photographer. So you have to take that risk and I think we want to take that risk. But you always have to be clear, you also need to show. So within our big digital exhibition with, with movies, we also show vintage material which we change all the time where you see the object itself. If people want to visit us and have the object in their hands, they're welcome. But we do both. I, I didn't really understand if in terms of digitalize and uh, you were asking digitalization of the archive of, or, or also going on the, on the internet. Uh, I'm sure this question of the internet will be raised during these two, two days. Um, I have to say also that I don't believe in internet and, uh, and I think yeah, I, I know it's, uh, I could be old to say that, but uh, I think the internet sites are um, very good to, to promote the activities of our museums, but uh, I'm very afraid by all these uh, collection departments that want to put all the archive on, online. I don't want to put my archive online. I want the people to come in my museum. I want to, them to, to travel if they know that there is something important to, to see. I want them to, to go to, to Switzerland. So uh, internet is a way to, to present them things, to uh, give them the, the, the wish to, to, to come, but uh, going with the catalog, uh, the complete catalog of the museum online is not one of our pri priority. So that will be the end note of that morning. Back to the physical museum. Um, and uh, at what time do we come back?